Hello, everyone. Good afternoon to all the students of specialized BBA programs. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Very good afternoon to all. Hope my voice is reaching you smoothly and uh, there's no distortion as it happened last time. It's reaching, sir. Uh -huh. Actually, I, I, I uh, keep on switching the mics uh, when I'm at home and when I'm in uh, institution. And uh, these mics are uh, high end, uh, uh, say, professional mics. So uh, many a time, the uh, compatibility with the driver uh, that is missing. So, uh, you know, twice it has happened in uh, two of the sessions one session with you and the uh, one other session, three sessions, in fact, one is of IoT. Thrice it happened where compatibility of driver was a uh, bit low. So I have made this a practice now to ask uh, whether the voice is reaching fine or not. Though I've updated the drivers, but still like you never know technology incompatibility. OK, so we were discussing about uh, ethics and uh, we were into first module where I recommended uh, you uh, a video to be seen because we want to have a discussion. I'll be sharing uh, the same and after that AV gets complete, we will end up uh, with module one and uh, gradually we'll move into module two, maybe uh, second session in today's date. We'll start with module two. So. Uh, Let's see. Uh, I doubt that many of you must have uh, followed the link that was shared last time. Uh, so I am again, since it's part of our uh, curriculum, so we I'll be sharing it and I'll be giving uh, my observations. Uh, it's a slideshow, you know, it's a slideshow which is having voiceover. So uh, that we will see. And uh, then uh, pausing in between uh, whenever there's a requirement, I'll be sharing my uh, ideas, my thought. Uh, and uh, try giving you the explanations of few things. So uh, let's see. Let's start with the uh, the session. It's a YouTube link, and uh, again I'll be sharing today. Uh, you can follow. I think so. I am recalling that I've given the link in. Uh, I think so. I've given the link in LMS also. I doubt. So since this uh, course was granted. Uh, abruptly so i don't know i'm not able to recall whether i've shared that link or not so if not uh, on lms i'll be sharing it uh, here also with you so that we can follow and uh, it's it's a slideshow 20 minutes slideshow with the voiceover as i've said uh, so i'll share it with you and uh, whatever topics are there are in sync with the uh, what we have uh, you know, there is commonality of topics when you do UGs and PGs uh, for whatever subject uh, you are pursuing. So even if, in marketing, if you see, so basics of marketing will remain the same in UG and PG. Uh, same as with the, say, IT, same as with the HR and so on. Same as with the philosophy also. So uh, last time when I was taking uh, the sessions for uh, the PG program, then I developed this AV. Uh, this topic of philosophy is common in both. Uh, because basics remains identical and uh, the theories of philosophy are identical. So those needs to be uniformly covered in uh, uh, UG and PG. So the same is applicable and I've kept this for last because uh, this is one of uh, the topics uh, that I would uh, like to discuss along uh, with the AVs. So uh, I'm sharing the AV with you and
Grammarly does more than catch errors. With Grammarly, you can find. We didn't want it the ad. <laughs> so. Uh... I'm pasting this link uh, in your chat box also so that you can follow it. You can. Uh, when I, you will click here, you will get the uh, link to this particular AV. So I pasted this in uh, your chat box, which you can follow. I hope uh, the audio is playing on your side. Yes, sir. Okay. Dear viewers, welcome to this video cast in the knowledge series on professional ethics and social responsibility for sustainability. The series features deliberations on philosophy and ethics. Ethics at workplace, ethical considerations within a society, global issues in different sectors, and research ethics and academic integrity. You know, these are the topics for uh, PG, uh, but the first topic, philosophy and ethics, is uh, common. In fact, uh, the second one, ethics at workplace, is also common. So, ethics at workplace, we'll be uh, taking up this point in module two whenever we are going to start with. Uh, the AVs, like this is the first AV of the series of the uh, complete playlist. So, uh, it uh, mentions here yeah, all five points, but actually, these five points are not applicable for you. For you, it's uh, only the first point that's applicable for which this particular uh, AV will uh, suffice because this is on philosophy and ethics only. There are other AVs on ethics at workplace, ethical considerations within a society, global issues um, in different sectors, and obviously research uh, integrity. Uh, on that, other AVs are there, which I'll not be sharing with you because it is beyond the scope of our curriculum. Uh, ethics at workplace, uh, first we'll try to uh, get through the content, through the slideshow, uh, because, you know, uh, inside content of ethics at workplace is also a bit different compared to what is in uh, uh, PG. So that's why I formulated it. So uh, I may share that uh, with additional topics. I will not share it. Uh, but first one is exactly the identical thing because it talks about the basics of philosophy and ethics. So please do not get confused with the uh, topics here. We are only sticking to the first point uh, for which this particular AV is there. The current knowledge series on professional ethics and social responsibility for sustainability is brought to you by Jitendra Toma, an educationist and a consultant. The present cast deliberates on the ethical philosophy, its nature, scope, and branches, and will emphasize on basic ethical theories. Ethics always had been at the core of what is right and what is wrong. It is well expressed by Potter Stewart, former Justice of Supreme Court, that ethics is knowing the difference between what you have a right to do and what is right to do. Ethics, or moral philosophy, is concerned with questions of how people ought to act, and the search for a definition of right conduct, identified as the one causing the greatest good, and the good life, in the sense of a life worth living or a life that is satisfying or happy. The word ethics is derived from the Greek, ethos, meaning custom or habit. Ethics differs from morals and morality, wherein ethics denotes the theory of right action and the greater good, while morals indicate their practice. Ethic well, this is what uh, we have discussed in the very first class, the difference in morals and uh, ethics. And uh, uh, to, to appreciate you all, you uh, knew the difference. Ethics are laid down regulations, whereas morality is something which is inherited by you. Uh, based on the structure of that particular society in which you are living. So uh, we were uh, at dot there uh, and um, I'll appreciate you all that you already had the understanding of it. So we have discussed this uh, in very first session when I asked you what is the difference in uh, 
models and ethics. Uh, so uh, this slide is taking you uh, along with uh, that thought again, and uh, we'll proceed further. Ethics is not limited to specific acts and defined moral codes, but encompasses the whole of moral ideals and behaviors. A person's philosophy of life, also known as Weldon's Koan. Moral philosophy is the branch of philosophy that contemplates what is right and wrong. It explores the nature of morality and examines how people should live their lives in relation to others. The current cast is part of knowledge series on professional ethics and social responsibility for sustainability, and is brought to you by Jitendra Toma. Let us overview what is a moral philosophy. Moral philosophy asks questions like, how should people act? This describes normative or prescriptive branch of ethics. The question, what do people think is right, specifically denotes descriptive branch of ethics. How do we take moral knowledge and put it into practice? adheres to applied branch of ethics, and, the question, what does right even mean, describes meta-ethics branch of ethics. The coming section will deliberate on normative ethics, meta-ethics, descriptive ethics, and applied ethics in detail. Let us understand normative ethics. Normative ethics, or prescriptive ethics, is the branch of ethics concerned with establishing how things should or ought to be, how to value them, which things are good or bad, and which actions are right or wrong. It attempts to develop a set of rules governing human conduct, or a set of norms for action. Normative ethical theories are usually split into three main categories, namely consequentialism, deontology, and virtue ethics. Consequentialism is an ethical theory that judges whether or not something is right by what its consequences are. For instance, most people would agree that lying is wrong. But if telling a lie would help save a person's life, consequentialism says it's the right thing to do. Two examples of consequentialism are utilitarianism and hedonism. Let us understand utilitarianism. Utilitarianism is an ethical theory that determines right from wrong by focusing on outcomes. It is a form of consequentialism. Utilitarianism holds that the most ethical choice is the one that will produce the greatest good for the greatest number. It is the only moral framework that can be used to justify military force or war. It is also the most common approach to moral reasoning used in business because of the way in which it accounts for costs and benefits. Utilitarianism also has trouble accounting for values such as justice and individual rights. For example, assume a hospital has four people whose lives depend upon receiving organ transplants, a heart, lungs, a kidney, and a liver. If a healthy person wanders into the hospital, his organs could be harvested to save four lives at the expense of one life. This would arguably produce the greatest good for the greatest number, but few would consider it an acceptable course of action, let alone the most ethical one. So, although utilitarianism is arguably the most reason-based approach to determining right and wrong, it has obvious limitations. So, you know, three under normative uh, ethics, three things are being uh, discussed. We'll move to deontology and virtue ethics uh, after this. So, consequentialism, as it says, it is uh, something related to con consequences, you know. So, uh, you know, it is a belief in uh, one of the uh, philosopher's uh, house that uh, we should see that whatever we are doing, if it is bringing in some uh, uh, good to people or doing some good to people, then we should be doing it and it should be taken as an ethical uh, conduct of ours. So, 
if you see consequentialism, that again, uh, as the slide says, is divided into two, uh, utilitarianism and hedonism. Hedonism says that uh, I should be doing uh, that particular thing which I like. So if it is bringing me happiness, then there is nothing wrong in doing it. Wherein uh, the outcome of it has been talked in um, utilitarianism. So, uh, you know, when you focus on the outcomes, the example in front of you, uh, it, though the outcome is very, very good, uh, uh, what it says is there are four people who would be requiring uh, organ transplant uh, to save their life. And if a healthy person comes in, then uh, we should not be, uh, say, uh, forcefully killing that person to take out the organs. It's a bit funny also to take out the organs and uh, put, uh, transplant those organ, organs into four people. So, you know, death of one person is actually saving four lives. So we, that's very much possible, you know, that this is one is to uh, four, ratio of one is to four. So one loss, uh, four gains, but shall we doing it, you know? And that's why this uh, utilitarianism under consequentialism is always uh, questioned uh, based on this particular thing, that we should not always look into the outcome of uh, a particular action. Mm -hmm. That outcome may seem good, but it is not taken as an ethical practice as in the case here. So you yourself can very well judge here, you know. Uh, there are different houses, different houses of experts, different houses of philosophers, which uh, follow a particular approach. So people who may be following uh, consequentialism and un uh, under that uh, utilitarianism uh, may very well say that we should be focusing on the outcome only. And uh, we should see if some action is uh, good, if it is bringing some um, happiness to uh, some people, then we should be doing it. As in the previous slide, it, it talks about uh, telling lie. So we may be groomed in a particular way that uh, telling lie uh, or lying to somebody is a cheat. Uh, but then if it is saving a life of somebody, then we should um, practice that cheat. Because the outcome is uh, very much positive. We are able to save uh, somebody's life. But when you go to uh, again to say uh, law, then you should not be uh, saving somebody who is a criminal. So, you know, there are challenges. There are challenges which are always been uh, posted against these particular um, theories. Second is uh, hedonism. Uh, we'll proceed to that. Hedonism says that if it is making us happy, if that action is making us happy, then we should be doing it. Now, it could be a consumption of even uh, prohibited substances. Shall you be doing it? Question is that. So, you know, the world remains divided. World remains divided as per what particular theory people are following at particular instance in their life. And uh, that's why those could be challenged. Just to add on why, why I'm saying this, uh, because, you know, when you will be in the organization, you will have number of people around you. And all these people have a particular thought process, which is guided by one or the other branch of philosophy. So what other person is saying may be uh, true as per his or her belief. What you are saying is also true as per your belief. But when such a difference of opinion is there, then comes the um, ethical dilemma, what we should be following. And that's why it becomes very, very important for management people to sit across the table, discuss every aspect of it, and then apply a particular uh, action. So that's why this message is really very, very important. You know, uh, what is written in front of you, just see that utilitarianism that says that uh, we should see the outcomes and if outcomes are good, then we should perform the action to obtain that outcome. But here, if you see the example, we should not be killing that healthy person just for uh, sake of uh, saving four lives. And if we do that, what we, this house again can be divided and then can, can have uh, uh, a thought process. So even if I ask you, uh, your class may uh, be divided into two groups. You know, people may say that it's right. People may say it's wrong. So from management perspective, I hope uh, you have got the uh, message that I'm trying to uh, convey to you. And that message is whenever there is a difference of opinion, please sit across uh, the table and try to resolve it. Because in, in such a scenario, nobody is wrong. Nobody is wrong. Everybody has their own justification to their own truth and action. 
So what is right, that needs to be decided by people sitting together, and that's why the board meetings are there. So board sits and decides upon it. What is appropriate action? So I hope uh, these two uh, concepts till now, we have not gone through hedonism, utilitarianism under consequentialism is very, very clear to you. This talks about the outcome. Course of action, let alone the most ethical one. So, although utilitarianism is arguably the most reason based approach to determining right and wrong, it has obvious limitations. Let us see what hedonism ethical theory is. Hedonism is the belief that pleasure, or the absence of pain, is the most important principle in determining the morality of a potential course of action. Pleasure can be things like party, drugs, and rock and roll. But it can also include any intrinsically valuable experience like reading a good book. Hedonism is a type of consequentialism, and it has several forms. For example, normative hedonism is the idea that pleasure should be people's primary motivation. On the other hand, motivational hedonism says that only pleasure and pain cause people to do what they do. Egotistical hedonism requires a person to consider only his or her own pleasure in making choices. Conversely, altruistic hedonism says that the creation of pleasure for all people is the best way to measure if an action is ethical. Regardless of the type of hedonism, critics fault it as a guide for morality because hedonism ignores all other values, such as freedom or fairness, when evaluating right and wrong. So there are certain uh, hedonism, uh, those are being given here. Uh, it talks about uh, the pleasure that is brought to the larger group. It talks about the personal pleasures and so on. But, uh, you know, when you talk about the pleasure under the uh, activity that you are doing, which can bring in the pleasure to a specific few uh, individuals or a specific few, uh, there may be a violation of um, freedom of uh, particular people. So it may be that uh, you may be very, very uh, good group. You are the group of bikers and you go out, you uh, go to India Gate and you're occupying complete uh, road wherein the people who are trying to uh, move across uh, the traffic, uh, there is a traffic jam happening. And uh, uh, like this is not bringing pleasure to somebody else, though it is bringing pleasure to you uh, uh, at that point of time. But uh, there could be an ambulance in that uh, uh, a traffic jam and there could be a loss of life because of few people uh, they are enjoying their life and having pleasure so that's why you know th there are uh, certain critics also for this and uh, as i've already said house could be divided into two uh, nothing is wrong nothing is right but at that point of time what is more important uh, that needs to be seen uh, for the fairness so uh, <laughs> Hedonism talks about um, doing something uh, which brings in the pleasure and uh, what brings in the pleasure is the best way to measure as the uh, last line of the first point says best way to measure if an action is ethical. So this is one more belief that you have and uh, people go by it. Coming back to consequentialism. It is sometimes criticized because it can be difficult, or even impossible, to know what the result of an action will be ahead of time. Indeed, no one can know the future with certainty. Also, in certain situations, consequentialism can lead to decisions that are objectionable, even though the consequences are arguably good. The current section elaborates on deontology. It is an ethical theory that uses rules to distinguish right from wrong. It is an approach to ethics that focuses on the rightness or wrongness of actions themselves, as opposed to the rightness or wrongness of the consequences of those actions. It argues that decisions should be made considering the factors of one's duties and others' rights. The Greek dean means an obligation or duty. I uh, think so that uh, the second uh, paragraph here, second point is making it very, very clear what is the difference in deontology and consequentialism. Uh, we have already gone through consequentialism and we know that it talks about the outcome. So uh, under the two theories that we have seen, 
under consequentialism, it it says that we talk about the outcome. So if the outcome is uh, uh, pleasurable or if it is uh, doing good at large to large number of people, then we should go by it. Uh, then it, then the action should be taken as uh, ethical. But you know, uh, the there is a second uh, house of experts which says that whatever is the outcome, we should not consider the outcome as the only measure of what we are doing. There are certain guidelines, prescribed guidelines, as per which we should be doing right and wrong. So as I, I was giving you the um, uh, example of a legal system, wherein uh, telling a lie can uh, uh, save the life of uh, somebody, uh, like even the criminal, uh, but you know, uh, under deontology that has been uh, uh, contradicted it says that if there is a law it should be treating uh, people accordingly so there are certain regulations which have been defined as per that people should be uh, treated so if somebody has done wrong uh, there has to be some uh, a critical treatment to that person if somebody has done good then obviously we should apprise that person with the uh, better uh, rewards so uh, that's one thing second is even if you go to the organizations business management organization uh, what we have the setups uh, we tend to first bring in the rules and regulations and if you say that there are certain rules and regulations as per which you should be uh, performing the actions there are certain standard operating pr procedures what you call sops and you should be uh, uh, putting up the efforts as per what is prescribed in sops uh, there is a sequence of uh, every uh, process that is defined so you should abide by uh, how it should be done why it should be done and uh, actually you should be engaging that way so you are prescribing why the regulations those are being defined and in that case you are talking about what is right and what is wrong in the action itself not about the outcome and that's where you are uh, sticking to deontology so it is about the actions so what is the outcome we are we are least bothered about it we are least bothered about it as for this house of, house of experts what we are bothered about is that are we breaking the rules question is that are we breaking the rules? So you know, I'm I'm stopping. Uh, I I stopped at the um, traffic light because light is red, and uh, you know I am in the first row, wherein uh, there is an ambulance coming from uh, the back, and it has come just uh, behind me. I, my my car is parked there just because of the traffic light. So shall I be moving forward and uh, forward uh, the stop line? Shall I cross the stop line and give the way to the ambulance? Question is that. So if I'm talking about the outcome, what I'll do, I'll I will um, I'll I'll adopt an approach where actually I'm breaking the rule and I am crossing the stop line, allowing giving a space to the ambulance to go across. Wherein if this this is what is uh, consequentialism. Wherein if I what I do is I park my vehicle there, though there is an ambulance, I so I know that there is a kind of um, emergency. Uh, uh, but still what I'll do, I'll not cross that stop line. Why? Because the rule says it's wrong. So I'm abiding by the rules. So if you are um, into consequentialism you will react uh, differently if you are into deontology you will react differently and both approaches are laid down approaches these are branches of philosophy uh, so if i do not give a path to uh, ambulance or say way to the ambulance i am still ethical but due to me following or i am a follower of deontology that's why i am ethical Wherein if I give the uh, passage to uh, ambulance by jumping the stop line, jumping the pedestrian line for which I should be challenged uh, under 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 uh, the regulations, but I break that rule so that I, I'll be able to save the life of somebody or contribute towards or I'm seeing that this particular action of mine could save life of somebody. In that case, I'm talking about the outcomes, consequence of my action. So if that is positive, I say I'm ethical, though I have broken the regulation. So, you know, uh, that's why I say whenever you are in the organization, make sure that um, you you resolve the uh, issues with the people because you will have people from various thoughts. I hope you are getting this point of mind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm? 
and i hope now you are able to understand that these are very very uh, simple kind of uh, uh, branches which justifies a particular action based on certain approach and you know when you go to virtue ethics what is a virtue ethics you know there there are people who are larger than life figures to us and uh, we have seen those people performing uh, good actions over a period of time and ultimately uh, we we are blind followers of those people and there are always blind followers of the, of um, people you know whether you talk about uh, honorable prime minister currently um, uh, mr narendra modi they are blind followers of um, him even if you talk about like uh, the corporations if you if you see so in corporations like mr tata is there so uh, quite uh, a respectful uh, person uh, in his domain uh, whatever he has done in uh, previous times based on uh, that we are rating the actions of that person as the most ethical person because he is trying to benefit society every time he is performing any operation so in that case if we perform some operations in today's date we blindly support that person so it's a virtue which a person has built up around him and when the person performs some action then we uh, think in a particular way that this person cannot do uh, anything wrong and if he has taken some action then there is a possible reason that he is trying to bring in some goodness to the people around him so that's what is a virtue ethics you know so we have we are seeing three kinds of different approaches first is based on the consequences so consequentialism is there which talks about the outcome so if uh, any action that you perform if outcomes are positive you say we have worked in uh, ethical manner the second is the ontology which is currently on your screen which says oh there are certain regulation those those need to be followed and as i gave, gave you the example of uh, ambulance and giving passes to the ambulance i was sticking to the regulation regulation says that when there is a traffic light red i should not be jumping the stop line and i am avoiding by it so how i am unethical there could be any vehicle around that i am least bothered about it i am not bothered about the consequences so in that case this is a second approach and what is a third approach third approach is a uh, person specific so there are uh, again i say larger than life figures around us and whatever they do we think that whatever they have done uh, is appropriate and this person cannot do anything wrong so we are follower of that person and we have a certain belief inside us about the actions of a person and uh, we uh, believe the justification of the action of that person whatever justification he has we don't even ask for a justification we believe that whatever person has done is actually appropriate so there will be an example of uh, batman and uh, joker and uh, you see that example which will make it uh, more clear so uh, i hope i have given my explanation over it we'll um, uh, proceed with uh, the slide show deontology is often associated with philosopher immanuel kant kant believed that ethical actions follow universal moral laws such as don't lie don't steal don't cheat deontology is simple to apply it just requires that people follow the rules and do their duty This approach tends to fit well with our natural intuition about what is or isn't ethical. Unlike consequentialism, which judges actions by their results, deontology doesn't require weighing the costs and benefits of a situation. This avoids subjectivity and uncertainty because you only have to follow set rules. Despite its strengths, rigidly following deontology can produce results that many people find unacceptable. For example, suppose you're a software engineer and learn that a nuclear missile is about to launch that might start a war. You can hack the network and cancel the launch, but it's against your professional code of ethics to break into any software system without permission. And it's a form of lying and cheating. Deontology advises not to violate this rule. However, in letting the missile launch, thousands of people will die. So, following the rules makes deontology easy to apply but it also means disregarding the possible consequences of our actions when determining what is right and what is wrong another approach to normative ethics is virtue ethics it is a philosophy developed by aristotle and other ancient greeks 
It is the quest to understand and live a life of moral character. This character-based approach to morality assumes that we acquire virtue through practice. By practicing being honest, brave, just, generous, and so on, a person develops an honorable and moral character. According to Aristotle, by honing virtuous habits, people will likely make the right choice when faced with ethical challenges. Approaching the normative ethics back, to illustrate the difference among three philosophies of normative ethics, ethicists Mark White and Robert R. prefer to the film The Dark Knight, where Batman has the opportunity to kill the Joker. You See, this is the example which I was talking about. So, uh, you know, this was uh, uh, represented by uh, Mark White and Robert R. They refer to the film and... Uh, they uh, picked up the instance, uh, Batman, when he had an opportunity to kill the Joker. Now, uh, you see, utilitarian's uh, approach has been given, which is obviously uh, part of cons consequentialism and which actually talks about the outcome. Deontologist approach is there and virtue ethics um, approach is there. And you see all three, what is their difference, you know? So... Uh, since we talk about the outcome, so uh, as per utilitarians, uh, which is part of consequentialism, uh, White and Arp su suggest as utilitarian uh, that Batman should kill uh, a Joker. Why? Because, you know, uh, the activities of Joker thereafter, if not killed, will, uh, say, uh, risk life of uh, many people. So he may end up killing more people, you know. So that's why killing one person, if saves lives of uh, thousands of people, we should be doing it. That's what is an uh, outcome. And uh, if you talk about deontologists, they say, uh, oh, we should abide by the regulation. So killing is wrong. You should not be uh, taking law in hands and uh, you should not be killing somebody. Though we know that the outcome is going to be very, very disastrous. Uh, that person may be... Uh, killing more people, thousands of people, maybe hundreds of people, thousands of people. So, uh, but we let the person go because, you know, we uh, abide by the regulations. We are not uh, the official to kill somebody. So, uh, we let it go. And what about virtue ethics, you know? Even if, uh, suppose, uh, Batman kills the Joker, in any case, people are not going to question him because Batman has done a number of good things for the complete society. So if he has done that, then obviously uh, there must be some reason behind it. And we are not questioning the action of uh, action of uh, Batman. So these are three philosophies that we were talking about. And uh, I hope this particular example makes it very, very clear to you. Utilitarians, White and Arp endorse killing of the Joker by Batman. By taking this one life, Batman could save multitudes. Deontologists, on the other hand, would reject killing the Joker simply because it's wrong to kill. But a virtue ethicist would highlight the character of the person who kills the Joker. Does Batman want to be the kind of person who takes his enemy's life? No, in fact, he doesn't. Let us discuss another branch of moral philosophy, metaethics. Metaethics is concerned primarily with the meaning of ethical judgments, and seeks to understand the nature of ethical properties, statements, attitudes, and judgments, and how they may be supported or defended. A metaethical theory, unlike a normative ethical theory, does not attempt to evaluate specific choices as being better, worse, good, bad or evil. Rather, it tries to define the essential meaning and nature of the problem being discussed. It concerns itself with second-order questions, specifically the semantics, epistemology and ontology of ethics. The major meta-ethical views are commonly divided into two camps, moral realism and moral anti-realism. Moral realism, or moral objectivism, holds that there are objective moral values, so that evaluative statements are essentially factual claims, which are either true or false, and that their truth or falsity are independent of our beliefs, feelings, or other attitudes, towards the things being evaluated. 
It is a cognitivist view since it holds that ethical sentences express valid propositions, and are therefore truth apt. Moral anti-realism holds that there are no objective moral values, and comes in one of three forms, depending on whether, first, ethical statements are believed to be subjective claims supporting ethical subjectivism, second, not genuine claims at all, which is called non-cognitivism, or, third, mistaken objective claims which is termed as moral nihilism, or moral skepticism. The third branch of moral philosophy is descriptive ethics. The current section elaborates its concept. Descriptive ethics is a value-free approach to ethics, which examines ethics from the perspective of observations of actual choices made by moral agents and practice. It is the study of people's beliefs about morality, and implies the existence of, rather than explicitly prescribing, theories of value or of conduct. It is more likely to be investigated by those working in the fields of evolutionary biology, psychology, sociology, history, or anthropology, although information that comes from descriptive ethics is also used in philosophical arguments. Descriptive ethics is sometimes referred to as comparative ethics. It is because so much activity can involve comparing ethical systems, comparing the ethics of the past to the present comparing the ethics of one society to another, and comparing the ethics which people claim to follow with the actual rules of conduct, which do describe their actions. It is not designed to provide guidance to people in making moral decisions, nor is it designed to evaluate the reasonableness of moral norms. The fourth branch of moral philosophy is applied ethics which is a discipline of philosophy that attempts to apply ethical theory to real-life situations. Strict, principle-based ethical approaches often result in solutions to specific problems that are not universally acceptable or impossible to implement. Applied ethics is much more ready to include the insights of psychology, sociology, and other relevant areas of knowledge in its deliberations. It is used in determining public policy. The following would be questions of applied ethics. Is euthanasia immoral? Is affirmative action right or wrong? What are human rights, and how do we determine them? And do animals have rights as well? Medical ethics, bioethics, legal ethics, business ethics, environmental ethics, information ethics, media ethics falls under the discipline of applied ethics. So, you know, there, there could be uh, validities asked about uh, somebody asking for uh, mercy killing, you know. The person may be into a vegetable estate for quite long and uh, is not loving his life. So, he may ask uh, people or he may ask even law to uh, give him a permission for uh, uh, mercy uh, death. So, you know, that's right or wrong. That's a question. Person has not done anything wrong, but shall law allow him to take uh, that step? So these are what applied ethics, you know, we are talking about human rights. So that's an applied ethics. We are talking about, uh, uh, say, animal rights and so on. Those are applied ethics. We are talking about rights of people who are uh, taken as subject uh, while medicines are being uh, tested, uh, take an example of Corona vaccine. Uh, there are subjects on which these uh, these tests are being done to find out whether uh, whether whether uh, the medicine is effective or not. But then there is always a risk which was carried by those people who were sampled to the population over which the tests are being done. Also, uh, when it comes to legal ethics and business ethics, there are case based. We will move to uh, causist uh, theory also, uh, which is in line with applied ethics, which says that uh, there has to be some kind of reasoning behind what you do. And that's why the case based uh, learning uh, is uh, considered appropriate. So you pick up your management uh, studies also. Um, a few of the faculties must be 
uh, giving you the cases, etc. But what is the uh, validity of those uh, cases? You know uh, how under ethics. Uh, so that will come under applied ethics, or it will come under uh, casuistry. The current cast is part of knowledge series on professional ethics and social responsibility for sustainability. The upcoming section will introduce few more important theories of ethics. Let us follow. The first one is theory of rights. The rights approach focuses on respect for human dignity. This approach holds that our dignity is based on our ability to choose freely how we live our lives, and that we have a moral right to respect for our choices as free, equal, and rational people, and a moral duty to respect others in the same way. Some of these rights are articulated in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, such as life and freedom, which include freedom of speech, freedom of religion, property ownership, and contractual agreements to name few. Other rights might include the right to privacy, to be informed truthfully on matters that affect our choices, and right to health, that is, to be safe from harm and injury, and similar other rights. This approach asks us to identify the legitimate rights of ourselves and others, in a given situation, as well as our duties and obligations. Consider how well the moral, legal, and contractual rights of everyone are respected and or protected by the action, and assess how well those affected are treated. As such, the ethical action would be the one we have a moral obligation to perform, that does not infringe on the rights of others. Uh, this is also important. Uh, we'll be taking up uh, this in detail, but uh, since societies also talks about uh, theories of uh, rights uh, of individuals, and uh, that's why if you see uh, the constitution also talks about uh, theories of rights so that there is a uniformity among the people from discrete cultures living uh, together but you go to the organizations there are always uh, talks about the rights so uh, rights of employees uh, you must have heard about uh, heard about that in nature rights of uh, uh, even the employer responsibilities of uh, employees and responsibility of employers uh, that needs to be uh, formulated because we are into a structure uh, organization and rights of people needs to be respected. Employees needs to respect the rights of uh, organization and the vice versa. Uh, that's also true. So we'll take up this uh, rights and responsibilities are part of our syllabus in module two. And uh, then we will relate it to the uh, organizations as I've just given you uh, a thought that this particular right is integral part of any structured business house in today's date. The another important ethical theory is casuist theory. Casuistry in ethics is a case based method of reasoning. It is particularly employed in field specific branches of professional ethics such as business ethics and bioethics. Casuistry typically uses general principles in reasoning analogically from clear-cut cases, called paradigms, to vexing cases. Similar cases are treated similarly. In this way, casuistry resembles legal reasoning. Casuistry may also use authoritative writings relevant to a particular case. Practitioners in various fields value casuistry as an orderly, yet flexible way to think about real-life ethical problems. Casuistry can be particularly useful when values or rules conflict. For example, what should be done when a business executive's duty to meet a client's expectations collides with a professional duty to protect the public? Casuistry also helps clarify cases in which novel or complex circumstances make the application of rules unclear. Should email receive the same privacy protection as regular mail? If someone develops an idea while working for one employer, is it ethical to use that idea to help a subsequent employer? Casuistry seeks both to illuminate the meaning and moral significance of the details in such cases, and to discern workable solutions. Some authors classify casuistry as a subset of applied ethics, or practical ethics. 
that is the branch of ethics that is concerned with the application of moral norms to practical problems. Others restrict the term applied ethics to deductive reasoning from principles to cases. Accordingly, those authors view casuistry as an alternative to applied ethics. So as I was, uh, I told you earlier also, uh, when we were on to applied ethics, uh, that uh, both are case-based uh, learning, you know, and uh, your management faculties also take up uh, the cases to identify that if you are stuck in a particular situation, how you can uh, utilize the experience of others uh, for your own uh, own benefit when you are stuck in a similar kind of situation. And uh, there could be a situation where your morals and ethics are being challenged. So in that case, how you're going to uh, work upon. So, you know, you do not know what the law permits you, what the constitution of society permits you and so on. But yes, you are in the organization and you may refer to a similar kind of case uh, which other organization faced in the previous times and they came out uh, of uh, a particular problem. So same could be applied by you, giving a reason that uh, there are people and these are the action plans which have been accepted in the society in previous times since others have also done it. So we are applying a similar kind of uh, solution uh, to our problem and that comes as a justification. So casuist theory is an integral part of all management uh, learnings because you learn from the cases which are experiences of others and uh, those experiences could be applied in case you are stuck somewhere. So this becomes more important. Remember uh, applied ethics, what is applied ethics and what is casuist uh, casuistry or casuist theory? Uh, that plays very, very vital role in the education, especially the management education. And of course, in life, uh, when you're trying to pre create a solution to some problem, uh, you will refer to the cases that how other people have come out of a similar situation. It's like even when when we talk about um, the problems across generation. So my father used to deal with this kind of situation in a particular way, and he used to be succeed, succeeding in his approach. Uh, since I, I've inherited that into me. I've inherited his business also, uh, so I will apply a similar kind of approach. So what I am doing is I am referring to the action plan adopted by my parents, my father uh, in the previous time, maybe 20 years back, and uh, I'll see how that is going to benefit me in today's date. So uh, that will become a standard. So though it has not been laid down somewhere, but reference to that case is going to be a standard for me and uh, I'll act accordingly, giving a justification for my action. So uh, that's what comes in the casuist uh, theory, casuistry and also in applied ethics. This brings us to the end of the cast on ethical philosophy. Well, uh, that's it from my side. Uh, this is the last and uh, followed by the graphics and so on. So that you can uh, see on uh, YouTube uh, whenever you visit it. Link has already been given to you. So make sure to uh, visit this. So anybody uh, coming from your side? We'll be starting with module two in uh, next session. So if there is a query here, please uh, you can raise the query uh, or when you come back, you can very well uh, uh, raise the query again. So we'll be meeting at 5, 4, uh, 15, I think so. 3.15 is uh, another session with uh, the BBA general students, group of uh, BBA general and with the specialized uh, BBA programs, uh, learners, scholars of uh, these particular programs, I'll be meeting at 4. Uh, 15. So anything from your side, any suggestion that you want to give up? No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Okay. So think over it again, uh, like go through the content again and uh, Possibly uh, the content of MOOC will be made available to you uh, within a week's time. Uh, as I've disclosed in the previous session also, I think so. Uh, we have submitted all the uh, documents, so mm -hmm. you will be uh, getting uh, the slideshows, you will be getting, getting the AVs, and uh, you will also be getting the write-ups of the modules. So that will be kind of a handout. 
kind of a book that you have not in form of a book but in form of a handout you will be having so you know i have for pg program mm, uh, for which i developed this uh, av which we have just referred to uh, i've submitted uh, the complete documentation so write ups were also submitted uh, i submitted uh, write up for one module module 4 previously and uh, day before yesterday uh, the final submission happened but that's for uh, pg program but the same deadlines are for uh, ug also so uh, probably your respective faculties faculties for ug program has also uh, submitted this uh, and um, team is trying very very hard to amalgamate uh, two different platforms technological platforms so that you will be able to access all these moocs on your amazon itself you need not to create a logins uh need not to follow uh, multiple links and so on uh, the content shall be made available to you Th that's what i have heard so since i uh, keep very uh, things transparent so i'm disclosing it with you so we'll meet again uh, yes, today yes please yes rishab thank you sir thank you sir uh, pleasure sir rishab so uh, we'll meet again uh, at 4:15 and uh, we'll try to uh, pick up module second though there is a navy for uh, module second but that's very vast there are the topics uh, are very very wide so uh, i will not refer to it i uh, have uh, made a specific ppt for you and uh, that we will be discussing and referring so meet you again uh, in the evening by that time have a nice living do well and live well Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Have a good time, everybody.